The starship, Avalon, whose destination is the colonized world of Homestead 2 transports 258 crew and 5,000 passengers, who are all in hibernation. However, it collides with an asteroid and it manages to repair all the passengers' pods except, Jim, Preston's pod, causing him to wake up. An automated recording welcomes him and tells him that he is going to travel for the next four months as they are almost at their final destination. She tells him that an ID band on his wrist is his key to exploring the wonders of the Avalon and takes him to his cabin to get some rest. She adds that his door will eliminate his post-hibernation sickness. In his cabin, the android tells him that she will prepare him for his new life on Homestead 2, hence he will meet his fellow passengers, take skill building classes, and learn about colony living. She also reveals that he will be assigned to learning class group 38 for passengers with technical and engineering skills. The next morning, Jim dresses up to resume his learning class with the rest, but to his surprise, he is the only passenger in the class group. The android doesn't respond as she has already been programmed and she continues with the lesson. Jim leaves to search for the rest but he finds no one. Curious, he then proceeds to the Grand Concourse aboard but he is told that only the ship's steward handles passenger affairs and the ship's steward is on level 3 of the Grand Concourse. He finds out that there is no one there and demands to speak with the captain. However, he is denied access to the bridge and he discovers that no one is flying the ship when he peeps through the hole. He then leaves for the observatory, where he is told that the Avalon is in transit from Earth to Homestead 2 and they will arrive at Homestead 2 in 90 years. He also finds out that the ship left Earth 30 years ago and Jim immediately figures out that he woke up too soon. Jim asks the AI how he could send a message to Earth and he sends a message to Homestead I on Earth, but he finds out that his message will arrive on Earth in 19 years and he will get his reply in 55 years. Devastated, he sees a man at the bar and a happy Jim rushes to meet him but he quickly finds out the man is an android named Arthur. Arthur tells him that his hibernation pod can't malfunction and adds that the remaining passengers will wake up four months before their landing date. Jim says that he has to be with him for 90 years but Arthur still insists that he can't be there, believing that his pod cannot malfunction. The next morning, Jim gets a coffee, even though almost all the coffees available are for the VIPs, then he retrieves the hibernation pod manual. He follows the instructions to fix his pod but soon finds out that the pod is still malfunctioning. He tries to break into the crew pod room because the room requires special authorization but all his efforts proved abortive. Soon after, he meets with Arthur to tell him that he is screwed as he is going to die of old age on the ship, but Arthur tells him that every cloud has a silver lining. While they talk, Jim asks him why he cleans the glass every day since he is his only customer but Arthur says that people get nervous if a bartender just stands doing nothing. Arthur then advises him to take a break from worrying about what he can't control and live a little. Later on, Jim breaks into the Vienna suite and has fun in the suite. Day after day, he continues to enjoy the benefits of the suite, playing games, eating their expensive food, and sleeping on the exclusive bed, but it was not enough as he soon gets bored of it all. A few months after living alone on the ship, he finds a room and spots a spacesuit designed to withstand the harsh environment of space. He puts on the spacesuit and leaves the spaceship to observe the outside world. He takes off the spacesuit and decides to leave the Avalon without it, even though it will kill him. However, he has a change of heart and rushes back in. He slips on his alcohol bottle and falls but when he stands up, he finds a beautiful passenger, Aurora sleeping in her hibernation pod. He leaves to check out Aurora's profile, it turns out she's a writer and he takes a liking to her. He continues to watch her profile video and decides to greet her with, good morning. Afterward, Jim tells Arthur about Aurora, revealing that he has found a perfect woman but she is out of reach. Jim continues to check her profile video and sees the hibernation pod manual. He starts thinking of waking Aurora up. Right after, he leaves to ask Arthur if he will use his power to wish someone was with him if he is trapped in an isolated desert but Arthur tells him that he has never been on an island. Jim finally confesses that he knows how to wake Aurora but Arthur tells him that he can't do that because he is there for him. Jim tells him that he doesn't have feelings or a mind since he is not a person and leaves to W. Ach Aurora once again. Jim tries to take his mind off Aurora but he is unable to do that. Later on, he shaves his beard and hair, then proceeds to deactivate her pod. He quickly leaves to return the equipment he used to avoid being seen by her. He then returns to the Grand Concourse and meets with her. She asks him what is happening, prompting Jim to reveal that the crew is still asleep and they are the only ones awake. He takes her to the observatory where she finds out that they will arrive in approximately 89 years. Jim tells her that they can't get to the crew's control room even though he has been awake for a year and three weeks. Aurora tries to go back to sleep but Jim tells her that there isn't any way to go back to sleep. Jim offers to walk her to her cabin but Aurora rejects the offer and says that it must have been hard for him to be alone on the spaceship. 
Jim makes Arthur promise him not to tell Aurora that he woke her, although he feels bad about waking her up. The next morning, while Aurora tries to find out how she is awake, Jim approaches her and they go to the cafeteria together. Aurora finds out that Jim is not a gold passenger and offers to get him food. The two talk about a solution but Jim tells her that he has tried everything possible, but nothing worked. Aurora tries to get a solution but soon finds out that it ends in disappointment. She then decides to document her experience on the ship. Later on, Aurora interviews Jim and asks him why he left Earth, as he is the first hibernation failure in the history of space travel and Jim explains that he wanted to start a fresh and new world. The two start to bond and grow closer to each other, having fun and playing games, trying to cheer her up. Later that day, Aurora meets with Arthur and he tells her that she is wonderful. He also adds that Jim made an excellent choice, which makes Aurora blush. Jim uses the equipment in the spaceship to build a machine and he uses it to ask Aurora out on a date, but Jim thinks that she wasn't impressed. Later that evening, Jim goes to pick her up and they go to the bar together. Jim tells her that he was giving her space after Aurora accuses him of taking so long before asking her on a date. They go to the restaurant before wearing their spacesuit to explore together. They try to kiss when they return but the suit stops them and they later make love to each other. Not long after, they fall in love and get comfortable with each other as Aurora moves into his cabin. They continue to get fond of each other and Jim decides to make a proposal ring. One day, Jim gives Aurora a flower, which makes her happy. It's Aurora's birthday and Jim plans a surprise for her, but Aurora states that there are no secrets between them and Arthur hears it. Having no mind and feelings, Arthur tells Aurora that Jim woke her up exactly a year ago while Jim finally prepares to propose to her. Returning to the bar, an enraged Aurora confronts him about waking her up and tells him not to talk to her again. Aurora is sad and cries and leaves whenever Jim tries to talk to her. Later that night, she physically abuses Jim and tries to kill him but changes her mind. The next morning, Jim talks to her and apologizes for waking her up. He tells her that she saved him from committing suicide and he fell in love with her after he read her profile. Jim tells her that he doesn't want to lose her but Aurora screams that she does not care as he took her life by waking her up. One day, Jim finds out that his cabin has a function failure and it is rebooting. Elsewhere, Aurora confesses to Arthur that although she is a writer, she has never written by herself before and this might be the best work she has ever done. She adds that she doesn't know why she is writing it as there is only one person that can read it and she can't stand him but Arthur reminds her that time heals a wound. While they talk, Jim arrives thinking it's his day with Arthur but Aurora tells him no and leaves. Aurora receives messages from her friends and gets sad. Soon after, Jim makes a tree in the middle of the Grand Concourse which surprises Aurora. The machines in the ship start malfunctioning as the elevator stops working and the food machine also develops a fault. Trying to figure out what is happening, they hear a man, Deck Chief Gus Mancuso, speaking, asking who planted the tree on his ship. They run to meet him and he asks them how far they are, Jim tells him 88 years to go. Gus explains that the hibernation failure wasn't supposed to be possible, and he is surprised by this. Gus takes them to the crew's flight room as he thinks that something is wrong with the ship. He discovers that they aren't getting diagnostics from all the ships and there is no data to trace the failure. He decides to check all the systems manually with the help of Aurora and Jim. While they leave, a robot breaks, and the two tell him about the failures they h. Avenue encountered but Gus says that none of that has ever happened on that ship. Gus finds out that Jim opened Aurora's pod and asks him if she knows. Aurora confronts Gus and tells him that what Jim did is murder but Gus tells her that a drowning man will always drag someone down with him. Jim interrupts them to tell Gus that another robot has broken but Gus starts to cough and leaves to rest. On his way, he finds out that he is coughing blood while Aurora is unable to sleep and she goes swimming. The ship experiences gravity loss and she starts to drown, however, the gravity returns to normal just in time. She leaves the pool and meets with Jim. Together they go over to wake Gus, who tells them that the gravity loss isn't good. Later on, they discover that the ship is experiencing cascade failure, which started two years ago, and figures out that the failure woke Jim up. They soon find out that they are stranded on a sinking ship. While they think of a solution, Gus faints and the autodoc tells him that they found 612 disorders, even though Jim initially lies to him that they found a few disorders. The machine informs them that although there are various treatments for his diagnosis, none will meaningfully extend Gus's life. Gus leaves as he needs a minute alone but the ship starts experiencing difficulties in flight. Moments after, they find Gus dressed in his duty attire and tell them to take care of each other. He also gives them his ID bracelet and asks them to find what's wrong with the ship instructing them to fix it before he dies. Aurora asks Jim if he could fix the issue but he tells her that he needs her help and they both leave for the main engineering. 
They find Arthur breaking all the glass cups but Jim shuts him down and they head over to the main engineering room. They begin to search for what is broken on the ship and they find out the power plant. While trying to break into the power plant, the pressure sucks Aurora in, and the ship initiates lockdown. Jim manages to stop the pressure problem and the oxygen level is restored. They soon discover holes in the ship, even though the ship is supposed to be meteor-proof. They finally find the problem in the reactor control machine and spot the asteroid that hit the ship two years ago. Aurora thinks that they are going to die but Jim says that there are replacement parts for everything. Jim replaces the part but the reactor vent fails, requiring them to override the reactor vent manually. Jim figures out that the solution is for him to open the outer door from outside as it is jammed and then cool the reactor. Jim gives her Gus's ID and Aurora looks emotional because she is not certain that Jim might return. She begs him to come back to her and confesses that she can't live on the ship without him. Outside, Jim finds out that the door won't open unless he stays there but Aurora begs him to leave. Jim holds the lock and tells her to vent the reactor. Realizing that Jim will die, she is reluctant at first, but later vents the reactor, and Jim gets pushed out of the ship due to the high pressure after his tether broke. Aurora is sad to hear this and states that she is going outside to rescue him. Jim apologizes for what he did and says that he read her book and it will be great. Aurora rushes outside to save him and manages to pull him back into the ship. She takes him into the autodock and the machine says that Jim is dead. She tells him to resuscitate him but the machine says that the process requires authorized medical supervision. While she cries, she remembers that she can override the action using Gus's ID and she does it. The machine resuscitates Jim and she's happy that he is back. Soon after, Aurora helps Arthur with his malfunction and he becomes fully operational. Later on, Jim shows Aurora that the resuscitate process has an option called stabilizer and suspend, which stops all metabolic activities, and says that with Gus's ID it is just like being in hibernation inside the autodoc, but there is only one autodoc. Jim tells her that she's going to lay down in it and wake up at Homestead 2 to write her book and finish the journey that she set out to. Aurora tells him that he will be alone but Jim says that he has been alone before and he will come to visit her. Aurora rejects the idea and reveals that they are going to spend their lives together. The next day, Jim gives Aurora the ring and the two swim together in the pool. 88 years later, in Homestead 2, the ship initiates the crew wake-up process and the movie ends with the crew checking around Homestead 2 and a recording of Aurora, describing the life she had with Jim on Avalon.